Hey everybody, Nick Dingu here again for another Super Mario Bros. in Construct 2 tutorial. We're up to part 10, and this time around we're going to be doing some bug fixes. That's why I'm bringing you a second video this week. Now, why am I doing it now instead of when I said I would actually do it at the end? Is because we're already starting to get some pretty major bugs and some inaccuracies compared to the original Super Mario Bros. And I'd like to fix them up as we go a little bit, just so I don't get overwhelmed at the end. Massive shout outs to Dirty Noob and Fred Oliver for helping out find some of these bugs and to actually come up with a couple of little fixes for me. So thank you guys, I appreciate that you got my back. So let's get this started, everyone. Okay, bug number one. Alright, for this one, the we have an issue where if we die underneath an item block, we will actually start collecting items as we die. Alright, let's fix this. The fix for this one's actually pretty darn simple. I want you to go to your Mario event sheet, okay? We're going to find the piece of code where Mario actually dies, and that is right here where it says set animation to dead. All we're going to do is disable Mario's collisions when he dies. So add action, Mario collisions enabled. Make sure it says disabled and drag that up the top. And that's going to fix that bug up for us. Beautiful. Next one. Bug number two. This bug revolves around the block particles. If you've played the original one and you break a block, you'll know that the pieces actually animate slightly. They flicker or they rotate. So there's a couple of things that we can do here. Let's do the simplest one. Okay. In Construct, what we're going to do is we're going to edit the animation of the breakable block particle. All I want you to do is double click on this guy. Okay, in the animation frames, I want you to duplicate the zero frame, and I want you to flip this one horizontally, so they're opposites to each other, okay? So you'll notice they sort of flicker back and forth like that. The next step is we need to make sure that the animation is set to looping, all right? And then we should be right to go. Make sure they sort of flicker back and forth. You can speed it up a little bit if you like, but that's another bug fixed. Number three. So this happens when you jump on two Goombas stuck together, you just get hit, and that occurs. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of code to fix this one up. Go to your Goomba event sheet, okay? And this right here, event nine, is our issue. Because basically we've said when Mario collides with a Goomba and he is falling, then he kills it, okay? That's fine. But as soon as we kill one Goomba, we send Mario back back up and all of a sudden he's not falling anymore and he gets hit okay so we need to add some more conditions down here to make this a little bit more robust I'm actually gonna add a sub event we're gonna check if Mario is not jumping so first of all let's check let's go to Mario so I pressed S for this people for a sub event I'm gonna check jumping and I'm gonna invert that we need to make sure Mario is not jumping because if he's not jumping then he can get hurt okay now the other problem is, what if a Goomba is falling off of a block and Mario jumps up? What this would mean is that Mario could jump through the Goomba and just keep going, rather than getting hit like you would expect him to. So, second condition, but it needs to be an OR block. So let's right click here, OR block, add the condition Goomba. Okay, we need to check that if the Goomba is falling and Mario gets hit by the Goomba, then he's dumb enough to be hit. Okay? That should take care of that bug. Next one. The bug number four. Alright, the next issue revolves around Goombas and falling on blocks. That's when they jump on a block and fall down, they go to the right instead of continuing off to the left. Alright, so this issue revolves around the walls. So, right there, the Goomba detects that he's hit a wall, so he turns around and goes the other direction. So what we need to do is modify our event sheet for Goombas once again. So come over to Goomba, and we're going to edit this event for... We're going to add a little bit of code here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to add a sub-event to my group, and then we'll move this code underneath our sub-events. So I want you to click S on our group. We're going to go to System to start with. We need to do a for each. And what this does is it makes sure that we check every Goomba individually. So for each Goomba, okay? Second condition to this new event is going to be Goomba falling, and we need to make sure that he is not falling. So invert that. So for each Goomba that isn't falling, check the walls. 
So what I want you to do is grab number four by the tab on the left, drag it on top of any of these conditions, and then we're good to go. So for each Goomba that's not falling, you're good to go. Run it, make sure it works. He should just fall, and he should just go the other way. There we go. Perfect. Next bug. Are you sick of it? I'm not. Number five. Right, this one's a bit of a twofer. So if we hit an item block, and it has an item in it, it breaks automatically. So this block has been set up to have one item in it, and it just breaks. It doesn't even spit out the item. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to fix. Second thing we need to fix, it was brought up by Dirty Noob, that when you hit an item block that has items in it and it runs out, it turns into an inactive block, similar to the way that our item blocks become inactive afterwards. So what we're going to do is go to our blocks event sheet and fix the first bug here. Okay, the first bug occurs because this and this execute separately. So what I mean is if we have one item in here, it's going to go item count equals zero, it's going to subtract the item count and do all this jazz, but it's then going to go to this one and say, oh, there's no items left, let's do this code. Or if he's big, he does this one. We need these to go off separately. So how we fix that is you right-click on the tab here for 15, you add an else condition or event for that matter. You click on this guy, select this guy as well, and drag them on top of the else part, just there. Okay, and that's going to fix that so they fire off at different times and I can prove to you that it works because I can go up here, hit this, get an item, and then break it. Now we need to fix the breaking part, which is actually a little bit more involved, unfortunately. So first thing we need to do is add a new animation to the breakable block. We could do this many ways. I found this the quickest so we don't have to reinvent all the code that we did in the previous videos. So double click on this bad boy. Okay, I want you to add a brand new animation. So right click, we're going to call it inactive. All right. And we're going to import the same inactive sprite that we used for our item block. So I'm going to right click down here, import sprite strip. Thank you, Windows 10. And make sure you've got the item block inactive frame. Okay. Yep. Tick. Okay. Okay. It's good. Okay. Next step is we have to have it so that when we run out of items, that it automatically becomes inactive. We still need it, so if it has no items straight away, that it breaks because a normal breakable block will break. So this code should take care of that. However, if it does have an item in it, then it needs to be, um, I guess, an inactive block after that. So what I'm going to do is we have to change the condition here to make sure that it's not an inactive block. So add another condition. See, you're going to go to breakable block, and you're going to go is playing, da da inactive and we're going to invert to not playing inactive so that way you can't hit an inactive block okay next stage we're going to add a sub event to this guy so press s okay so this is going to happen after we spawn the item and all that kind of jazz okay we're going to check the breakable block we're going to check his instance variable and we're going to check his item count if it's equal to zero then we're going to change his animation so set animation to inactive all right. Now we may make a few problems doing this, but I reckon that bug is pretty much fixed for the moment. So, last bug, everyone. People is when oops, a Goomba is on a block and you hit underneath it, he should die. He shouldn't just bounce up and down. All right. So let's get this going. We're going to add some new code to our Goomba function here. Okay, and we're going to put it under the Goomba versus Mario now. Yeah, no, I know it's technically a block, but anyway, that's what we're going to do. So I want you to add a sub event for the Goomba versus Mario, and we're going to check whether the Goomba is standing on top of the block, but unfortunately we can't have it when the Goomba collides with the block, because obviously Mario is not going to hit the block at the same time the Goomba hits the block. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if it's overlapping at an offset. Okay, click next for that. What object is it? It's a breakable block that we're going to check he's colliding with. Now, right now, what this allows us to do is check if the Goomba is colliding with the breakable block. But because of the platform behavior, he never will. He's never going to be overlapping as such. So we use the offset Y by one pixel, and that way it will force his collision box to be overlapping with it. Okay, So it pulls the Goomba down one pixel during this check, and then it doesn't actually change his position. It just pretend that he's pulled down a pixel and then checks if the Goomba is overlapping with our breakable block. Now, we don't want the Goomba to die just because he's touched a breakable block. The breakable block needs to be hit by Mario. So how do we know if the breakable block has been hit by Mario? Well, that's 
Pretty simple, actually. It's the breakable block. We're going to check if the sign behavior is active. Because if the Goomba's overlapping and the sign behavior is active, that means that Mario's hit the block and it's bouncing up and down. Da, 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 da. Last one, people. Let's get it over with. So most people will remember that when you hit a block underneath it and a Goomba's standing on it, the Goomba will flip upside down, he will flop in the air, and then he'll fall down and die. Okay, so what we need to do that, the first thing, we need to do that in all the actions, obviously. The first thing is to disable the collisions, okay? So that he no longer collides with the breakable block, okay? The next step would be to disable his animation. So stop him animating, okay? We need to flip him upside down, Goober, flip. Yep, set him to flipped, okay? And then we need to make sure his gravity's a bit lower because I, I found, like, he pops up in the air. So we're going to do the same thing for the Goomba. Sorry, we'll do that first. Let's make him f pop up in the air. So we're going to set his vector Y. I found minus 120 to be a pretty good value. And his gravity by default is way too high. He flies down, okay? So I'm going to add in another set to change his gravity. Set gravity, 500. So it's a third of what they usually would have. I found that to be a nice little balanced fall from there. So let's test it out. Make sure it works. Bloop. Dead. Amazing. Okay. So the other thing we have to add is the item blocks doing the exact same thing. So I'm going to copy and paste this code as a, another event like that. And I'm just going to change the breakable block objects here to item blocks. So let's click there. Now, I know I could use families for this and made my life a little bit easier, but um, you know what? Whatever. It's working. Okay. And there we go. The Goomba should hopefully die on the item block as well. Let's move him down a little. See if I can get there quickly enough. Yeah. And make myself big. Bug fixes for now are complete. So thank you for watching this video, everybody. Hopefully the next video we can focus a bit on the enemies and we can get some more stuff working. All right. Catch you then, everybody. Thank you again. Bye-bye.